Welcome to the Supernatural Life Podcast with Chad Gonzalez, a podcast all about helping you connect with God so you can manifest God to the world. Now, here's your host, Chad Gonzalez. Hey friends, this is Chad Gonzalez. I want to welcome you to this episode of the Supernatural Life Podcast. It's our goal to help you connect with God so you can manifest God to your world. So very excited about the month of April. Great, great things taking place. Wanted to let you know that our most recent interview with Sid Roth on It's Supernatural just released uh, this week, and uh, so you can go take a look at it. This was by far the the toughest interview I have ever had to do. Uh, We actually filmed this back in the beginning of January of this year, and uh, we were talking about what happened last year with Lacey. Uh, we're talking about our brand new book, Advance, uh, that just released, and uh, how you know even in the the worst circumstances of life, it doesn't change the mission, and we still got to continue to push forward and fulfill what God has called us to do. And so, I'd highly encourage you to go on over there to Sid Roth's uh, YouTube channel and check the interview out. I'm telling you, it's powerful. They did a wonderful, wonderful job with it, and I'm so very proud uh, to be a part of of that interview and that show and just so very thankful for all of those there at Sid Roth and the ministry there and all the crew and producers and stuff. Just a great, great group of people. And uh, some of them have become really good friends. And so very appreciative for them and all they've done. Uh, Speaking of advance, hey, if you haven't gotten a copy of the advance book, it's out. Go check it out on Amazon. There's the advance book. And then there's the advanced devotional that goes right along with it. Uh, There's 40 principles there. 40-day devotional that we went through and just showing you how to continue to advance. These are very practical things that, that are there for you to implement in your life, the things that I do. And so we've got those available for you. And the advanced conference in Tampa, Florida, you need to go and register for that right now. It's free. There's no cost. But we just ask people to register so that we know who all is coming and, and have roughly about how many. We're expecting a, a much larger crowd than we even had last year. And last year went beyond our expectations, but you can very simply go to advancecgm.com, advancecgm.com, and it will allow you to go ahead and register for the conference. Again, it's free. There's no cost. It's just to let us know roughly about how many people to expect. And uh, like we've told you before, if, if you didn't know, my dear friend, Jesse DePlantis, he's going to be speaking at the conference along with me. Uh, It's going to be June 13th and 14th. That's a Thursday night, Friday morning and Friday night. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be so much fun, so good. And it's our opportunity to come together as a team, as a family, and uh, the Dream Team family. And I come together and just encourage and inspire each other to continue to advance in all that God has called each of us to do individually and what he has called us to do corporately. I love all of our partners, love all of our friends. And it's just a great time to come down to Tampa. There's a reason we do it that way on Thursday and Friday. So you come down Thursday, Friday, it's our, it's our spiritual time. And of course, there's some fellowship time there as well. But also so that you have Saturday and Sunday to go to the beach, go to the parks, have some family time, some friend time. And so that there's a, a spiritual encouragement and there's also natural encouragement as well. So we'd absolutely love to see you there. It's going to be awesome. So praise God. Let's get into our message for this month. I want to talk about this, how to make your words mean something. I just finished the manuscript for a brand new book uh, that we've done. I, I'm so excited about this book. In some ways, it's kind of my, I feel like it's my life's work, uh, but it's called Untouchable, Never Sick Again. It's, it's a book we've done for Harrison House, and it's going to be releasing this December. But I, I was working on a chapter the other day talking about our imaginations and uh, came across this one scripture I've talked about a little bit, but I want to get into it in this month's podcast, the Supernatural Life podcast, and it's this, how to make your words mean something. You know, over the last several decades, there has been tremendous teaching, tremendous revelation about the power of our words. You know, we see uh, over in the Old Testament, the Bible says that there's power in our words. There's life and death in our words. And we see Jesus make this statement uh, over in uh, Luke. He says this, for out of the abundance of the heart, for out of the abundance of the heart, 
the mouth speaks. A lot of us have heard that statement, but let me look at you. Let me let you hear the rest of this here. He says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil, evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So right here, Jesus is, he's basically repeating what we see in the Old Testament, that your words are, are carriers of life or death. Your words can carry good or your words can carry evil. And, and so, like I said, there's been tremendous teaching over the years about the power of our words, how important our words are. And so from that, we have seen uh, people within different groups get, get very, very focused on their words and making sure they're saying the right things. I even have confession sheets and go through confessions daily, and, and that's a good thing. But, you know, if, if, we're, not, if we're not a little careful, uh, we could get to the point where we, we, we take a truth and we pull the power out of it. And what I've begun to notice is that in much of our doctrine, we have kind of, with some subjects, we've, we've taken uh, the cart and put it before the horse. Um, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you know, the, the horse pours, pulls the cart, but we've taken the cart and we've put it in front of the horse. In other words, you could say it like this, that we've, we've focused on the byproducts instead of focusing on the source. And when you remove the byproducts from the source, then all of a sudden you're working for the byproduct instead of the byproduct, uh, I don't know how else to say it, but instead of the byproduct being a byproduct of the source, we need to focus on the source. And so, for instance, in the area of healing, we have taken the scripture at 1 Peter 2.24, and we focused on the last part that says, by his stripes, you were healed. Well, that's not the entire statement. The entire statement was this, that you having died to sin, so you'd live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. We've made 1 Peter 2.24 to be a healing scripture when in reality, it's actually a, a righteousness scripture. It's, it's an identity scripture. It's telling you who you are, that because you're dead to sin, and now you're the righteousness of God in Christ, that's the source, then the byproduct is, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. See, we've been focusing on the byproduct healing for decades and decades and decades, and then trying to make it work. For many people, 1 Peter 2.24 has turned into a job description instead of an identity description. Instead of it describing who you are, We've used it to describe what I need to get. And the problem with that is it's going to turn into a job. And that job is going to frustrate you because you cannot go out and obtain what Jesus has already given you. We've put the cart before the horse. And so that scripture for many people just hasn't worked for a lot of people. And there's a reason. Because we focused on the byproduct instead of the source, your identity. Well, when it comes to our words, I discovered we've done the very same thing. I've begun to see this in, in quite a few areas. But with our words for decades and decades and decades, I mean, I know people that they are so careful with their words, and we should be. But just because you say something doesn't mean that you mean it. And if you don't mean what you say, then it's not going to happen. If you don't mean what you say, then your words are empty. They're void. Notice what Jesus says in Luke chapter 6 and verse 45. He says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Now some people would look at this and, and see that he's talking about words and the power of your words. And he is, but that's not the focus of his statement. The focus of his statement is not your words. The focus of his statement is your heart. See, why would we focus on the byproduct, which is our words, instead of focusing on the source, which is our heart? Now, it's, it's very important that we understand what Jesus is talking about when he refers to the heart. 
When he says heart here, he's, he's not talking about the physical organ that pumps our blood. He's certainly not talking about that. Now, most people will say, oh, he's talking about us as a spirit, that you know, your words come forth from your spirit. No, because if you look at this, the word heart in the Greek is the Greek word cardia, and it's literally talking about your soul, your thoughts, your imaginations. That's what it's talking about. And this is where I've been saying this for quite a while. And I want you to write this statement down if you're taking some notes. Whatever has your imaginations, it has your faith. There's been much teaching for decades, but our words are powerful and they will produce life and death, but we've erred in the teaching. If we will just change our thinking, if we'll change our imagination, we will automatically change our words. You see, we've spent so much time focused on saying the right thing. We've totally thrown off to the side the even greater importance of thinking the right thing. See, we've been trying to change our words without changing our thoughts. But see, if you're constantly meditating on the curse and meditating on the realities of this world, what's normal in this world, you may be trying to say the right thing. You may be quoting scripture, but you know what? Your words will mean nothing because they're not coming from faith. They're coming from intellect. Listen to what I just said. Just because words are coming out of your mouth, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, you could even sit there and say, Jesus, 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 but I mean, like, if you don't believe there's power in that, your words are meaningless. Now, that may sound like a pretty brash statement, maybe a little audacious, but again, I mean, yes, there's power in the name of Jesus, but you have to believe it. Just because you go out and say Jesus, I mean, there's people in this world named Jesus, Jesus, like, just because you go and call Jesus doesn't mean, doesn't mean power is coming forth. No. It's out of the abundance of your imaginations that, you, that your mouth speaks. It's what you've been meditating on and thinking on. That's what comes out, you know, and doing what I do and dealing with people, especially in the healing piece. Uh, especially in the circles that I run in, like, oh man, I'll be, I'll be doing a service conference and have people come up at the end and they're coming to tell me about their situation and, and I can just see it in their face that they're thinking as they're trying to say the right thing, but in their face, I can tell they don't believe a lick of it. Why is that? Well. I can tell you what they've been thinking because you get someone talking long enough, they'll eventually blab out. They'll eventually tell you what they're actually thinking. If you'll change your thinking, you will automatically change your speaking. Of course, I've seen that there's one surefire way to also determine where you are in your faith, and it's this. What moves your soul? What moves your emotions? Let me ask you this. When you hear the word cancer, does it move you? Does it move your emotions? Does it, does it invoke fear? If it does, I don't care what your confession is. Your confession is not going to change what you revere. And what you revere, well, that's what you believe is possible. Whatever moves your soul, it's going to move you into an arena of faith or an arena of fear. I can tell you what kingdom you're living from by very simply finding out what moves your soul. The stark reality of the situation is that what moves you today could possibly not move you an hour from now. There's not really any staying static in the things of the Spirit. We're either moving forward or backward. We're either hedging more toward the things of God or we're hedging more toward the things of the world. What do you think is possible? We're filled with life. The Bible says we're disconnected from sin. As a result, sickness. We live in the kingdom of God where sickness doesn't exist. But see, if your, if your imaginations are not on that, that you're dead to sickness and dead to disease, then you're going to be looking at the realities of the world where everybody gets sick and cancer is normal and dementia is normal as you get older and all these other things are normal. And you're going to look at those things and you're going to be making confessions of faith out of fear. And there's not going to be any faith in your faith statements. Now, 
I will say, hey, it's good to make positive confession. It's good, really good. And I do this. It's good to take scriptures and quote them and confess them. Why should we do that? We should be doing those things to renew our mind. We should be doing those things to change the way that we think. But we also must recognize that if the words that we speak are out of a response to fear and not out of a response of faith, then your words are meaningless. Even if you're quoting scripture, even if you're saying, Jesus, friend, there's got to be faith in it. And yet, I'm not trying to work up my faith, and you shouldn't have to be trying to work up your faith. Why should you have to try to work up who you are? No, friend, faith flows from a fellowship with God. That's where it really comes from. Faith flows from a fellowship with God. You know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. It's talking about the rhema word. It's talking about fellowship, that faith comes from a fellowship of hearing and seeing from God. That fellowship from God is where faith flows. And you know, if I'll keep my meditations on him, on the realities of him, on the realities of heaven, like Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3 says, it's become one of my favorite scriptures. Set your mind on the realities of heaven, for you died. And your new life is hidden with Christ in God. Set your mind on the realities of heaven where Christ is, for you died, and your new life is hidden with Christ in God. I need to put my mind, I need to put my thoughts, my imaginations on the realities of heaven. And if I will begin to do that and do that on a daily basis and keep my mind there, stay connected, stay connected to the realities of God, stay connected to the realities of my union with Christ, stay connected to the realities of heaven, if I will do that and maintain my imaginations there, keep my thoughts there, keep my awareness there, then the words that I speak, they will come from the realities of heaven. See, if I, if I keep my imaginations on the things of heaven, then my words will be of the things of heaven. I won't have to try to work up the right words. And that's where I get frustrated with people sometimes, that they're sitting there trying to tell me the situation, and yet, they're, they're mincing their words. They're, they're trying to try to say the right thing so that they don't get into a place where they're not in faith. But I can tell you right now while I'm looking at them, you're not in faith. And yet I don't say that from a condemning standpoint, a criticizing standpoint at all. But we have to recognize where we are. We can't be going around playing these faith games. We need to recognize where we are. And that requires humility. It requires you to humble yourself, take a step back, Realize where I'm at so that I can fix it, so that I can get where I need to be. But friends, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, we do not have a faith problem. We have an awareness problem. We have an imagination problem. If you will harness your thoughts and start a lot, stop allowing your, your imaginations to run wild. See, Satan's after your imagination. He's not even really after your faith. He's after your imagination. Why is that? Because if he has your imaginations, he has your faith. Think about it. That's what he did with Eve, isn't it? He went into the garden, told Eve, hey, if you eat of the fruit, man, it's going to make you like God. Now, he didn't want to admit she already was like God, but Eve didn't know. He was after her thoughts. Why? Because if he could get her to grab a hold of that thought, grab a hold of that in her imaginations, she would be the one to defeat herself. And what does she do? The Bible says when she saw that that tree was good for food. See, she'd been seeing that tree every day. But what happened? Now she saw it from a different perspective. She saw it with an imagination filled with a curse. And what did it happen? It brought about the curse. You see, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, that you know, life and death, it's a result of what we set our minds on. What you put your minds on, if you have a carnal mind, a carnal thinking, it's going to produce death. But if you have spiritual thinking, it's going to produce life and it's going to produce peace. You see, we've been focused on faith, but really faith is a byproduct. Man, do you see what's going on? We've been focusing on the byproducts instead of focusing on the source. Faith is a byproduct of fellowship. Why don't we focus on our fellowship with God? And you know what will happen? Faith will explode. 
Why don't we focus on being the righteousness of God, who we are in our union with Christ? You know what happened? Healing will explode. Why don't we focus on our imaginations and harnessing our thoughts and keeping our mind on the realities of heaven? And you know what will happen? We'll say the right things. And you know what will happen when we say the right things? Life will be produced in our life. Friend, I want your words to mean something. I want them to mean something. But in order for your words to do something for God, your imagination is going to have to do something for God. So I want to encourage you this month. Harness your thoughts. Have some soul control. Remember, whatever has your imagination, it has your faith. And whatever has your faith, that is what will be produced in your life. Friends, I want your words to mean something. For it to mean something, you got to do something with your imagination. Praise God. Hey, I trust that that helped you, encouraged you, inspired you. I got some things out of that. I'm going to go back and take a few little notes there too. There's some things I said I never really thought about in that particular way. And the Holy Ghost is just good like that. He'll bring it forth. Fresh revelation as we begin to enter in fellowship with him and tap into the deep, secret, hidden things of God. So praise God. Hey, if you're not a partner with us, we would love for you to be a part of the dream team. You can very simply go to chadgonzalez.com. If you are a partner, thank you so very much for all that you do, for your prayers, encouragement, and support. Uh, you just helped us to go to do our conference in Germany. It was phenomenal. We saw some great results, got to meet some of our wonderful, wonderful partners throughout Europe. We had over 20 countries represented there and just some of the sweetest people. And I can't wait to be back there next year. So praise God. Thank you again for being a partner, being a friend with us. Thank you for all that you do. We love you so very much. Make sure and register for the Advanced Conference. It's June 13th and 14th. You can go to advancedcgm.com and register today. Make sure and get your copy of the Advanced Book. And make sure to go over to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, but also watch our brand new episode of It's Supernatural with Sid Roth. God bless you. We love you. Remember in Christ, we always win.